Hello everyone, welcome to the day one TVMCon keynote. My name is Jared Resch and I'll be giving both a technical and community vision update for TVM in 2022. Apache TVM started as a research project just a few years ago. In that time, we've grown to 645 contributors, 66 organizations, and we've continued to grow as a project. We now have many personas, including ML systems engineers, hardware engineers, compiler engineers, and ML researchers all participating and interacting via TVM. With that, in 2021, it has been a year of change and growth for TVM. TVM is now being deployed in a more diverse number of settings than ever before and by a larger and greater number of organizations. On top of that, TVM is being used in new ways in research that we never dreamt of even a few years ago. With all this growth brings new challenges for TVM as a project. Not only do we have a now diverse set of contributors, organizations, and personas, but we also have a diverse set of needs. And part of this year is figuring out how to better serve the new wide set of needs from the community. One way to view TVM in the past is that there are many different technical components all interoperating to provide the end value to users of accelerating their model on a diverse set of hardware devices, but each one was developed as an independent technical component. For example, if you import your model through the ML framework to a computation graph like Relay, and then offload via BYOC, say the left-hand path in this diagram, to a hardware device versus going through TVM's end-to-end -end compilation on the right-hand path. In both cases, you interact with a bunch of components with hard boundaries between them. One of the challenges we've identified in this year and in the past in general is that these boundaries prevent some of the optimizations and interactions that we want to occur in both inside the community and inside of the technical architecture of the project. One way that we've re-envisioned this for 2022 is TVM as a virtuous circle. We've, been, we've dubbed this virtuous circle TVM unity, the idea that we are going to unify and connect the various personas and flows through TVM to better enhance what everyone is doing. For example, for ML researchers and scientists, their goal is to greatly expand their ability to support new models from their research and from their applications. For ML systems engineers, their goal is to make it simpler to optimize these models coming from ML researchers and ML scientists and support new operations mapped directly down to the hardware devices they care about. And finally, for hardware vendors, their goal is to be able to adapt and evolve to new software demands year over year without having to rewrite their software stack for each and every new hardware release. One way that we try to capture the same vision in text is to summarize the purpose of the project and the community in what we've been referring to as a TVM Y. In short, TVM's Y is to enable access to high performance machine learning anywhere for everyone. Now we put a little bit more words down here below, but we can go back to this visual representation of this idea again. Our vision for 2022 is to break down the barriers between these different personas so that they're more able to easily collaborate and interact so that everyone is able to go further and do more. In order to first talk about the technical component of this vision for 2022, let me introduce Tian Shi Chen, Apache PMC chair, to talk a little bit more about it. And with that, Tian Shi. Thank you, Jared, for the kind introduction. Hello, everyone. It's great to see everybody here virtually today. This is the fourth TVM conference. It's a really great journey to be with everybody over the past four years. The TVM community have always working on innovating and thinking about what the future should be going. Today, on behalf of the community, it's really a great honor for myself to share that collective wisdom with everybody here. If you look at the state of machine learning accelerations, you can find that usually there are four kind of obstructions being involved. At a high level, people take computational graphs and try to transform them so that you can get better equivalent graphs on that accelerates on different kind of platforms. Tensor program abstractions like TVM Tensor IR allows you to take uh, higher level loops and transform them to get better lo memory locality and parallelism. Hardware vendors are also building libraries and runtimes that accelerate key models of interest. And finally, we are also starting to see emerging hardware primitives such as NVIDIA's Tensor Core and other tensor instructions that really accelerate machine learning at a native level. Over the past few years, we have started to see all kinds of abstractions emerging along those four ca categories. And one of the key questions we always ask ourselves is that how can we build end-to-end -end solutions that solve our real-world problems? If you look at the current frameworks and solutions today, you can find that most of the current frameworks 
like machine learning framework, including TensorFlow and PyTorch, as well as compilation-driven frameworks like TVM and MLR-based solutions, usually follows what we call a multi-stage lowering approach. The idea is that we are going to take solutions from each of the abstractions and try to stitch them together in a vertical version. So the models will take into one kind of abstractions like computation graph, do a few round of optimizations and feed to the next level. Another key characteristics of this kind of approach is that usually the solution is presented to the end user as a closed box, so it's really hard to poke inside. As a pioneer field, we have already started to adopting and land this kind of solutions to our users. However, we also start to see challenges of this multi-stage lowering approach. In particular, there are two kind of boundaries emerging that prevents us from continuously innovating on the field. The first kind of boundary is what we see as a horizontal boundary. If you look at the solutions nowadays, you can find that the solutions are either library-driven that relies on standard libraries like CUDN and trying to really leverage those libraries for end-to-end -end machine learning deployment. This kind of approaches are usually easier to get performance for standard models, but it's also very engineering intensive to, to build. On the other hand, we also start to see compilation driven approaches that brings in a bit more compilation driven automation and, and automatic code generations that brings a broader coverage for a wide range of models. But it's also in the meantime, a bit hard to apply domain knowledge. Usually because the framework is either designed on one stream or another, there's a clear horizontal boundary in here to, to really get the best of both work. However, if you look at the best solutions or sweet spots, you can find that a lot of cases sweet spot actually lies in between because we really want to enable a smooth transition that combines both library-driven approach and compilation-driven approaches. The second kind of boundary in here is what we call a vertical boundary. Because different abstractions or dialects are usually designed in isolation by different organizational groups, usually they are tightly coupled within, but loosely coupled in between each of them. Usually when we do a multi-stage lowering approach, translation have to happen between vertical layers and done at one shot. This makes it really hard to make incremental decisions at a boundary because you kind of need to do one shot translations to translate all the things from a high level to a low level. In addition to that, this lowering process also goes in one direction from high level to low level. So while it is good for common cases, there are a lot of cases we start to find a need to get low level feedbacks back into high level. And right now the infrastructure is really hard to do that. Finally, if you want to apply customizations, you can find that you have to go through all the layers to apply tweaks. And it's really an engineering labor intensive as we start to add more layers to our multi-stage multi lowering approach. Over the past few years, we have learned several key lessons uh, that, that, try to, that try to capture the, the pain points and think about you know, where the future should be going. In particular, because of our boundaries, we can find that machine learning acceleration access today is really hard to allow collaborations between multiple organizations and parties because they sit at different layer of abstraction. We really want to break that boundary and enable broad collaborations between machine learning engineers hardware vendors and scientists. In addition to that, there's no single layer of abstraction is a silver bullet. We really need to co-design each layer of abstraction together in a tightly coupled fashion to really enable the next generation of innovation. Finally, as the field move forward, the sweet spot might also move from either library-driven approach to more compilation-driven or vice versa. So we need to find a way to iteratively evolve the system to adopt to the next best models and hardware as opposed to build the best solutions for just today's solutions. By capturing those lessons, the community have been collectively coming together to work on several topics that come together in a common theme, which we call TVM Unity. Specifically, the high level goal of TVM Unity is to take an approach that looks like a multi-stage lowering closed box approach into a more virtuous circle that allows different layers of instruction to interact with each other in a more organic fashion and enable a broader range of collaborations across machine learning scientists, hardware vendors, and machine learning engineers. Specifically, TVM Unity is our vision about the future of machine learning accelerations. It summarizes our rationales behind the evolution over the past few years and where we want to really evolve to. 
There are three key perspectives about, about unity that I'm going to elaborate in the following slide. The first key perspective is that we want to really be able to unify the abstractions across optimization layers. Uh, specifically to TVM, uh, we have been working on several abstractions that, uh, that on different layers. Automatically tensorization is a mechanism that allows us to take hardware native primitives and automatically transform high-level programs to match and leverage those primitives. At the runtime level, we have been working on TVM FFI that includes TVM object system as well as packed function runtime system that allows us to expose any of our runtime functions through any languages and call into those user customized functions through either compiled code or runtime code. TensorIR is our recent effort on re innovating on the tensor program first loop transformations and really allows us to do better tensor program transformations that are aware of the hardware primitives. Finally, the community is also collectively working on evolving Relay to this next generation called Relax that aims at supporting first class dynamic shape and a lot, a lot other features as well. To give you a sense of you know, what this unified abstraction specific look like, let me give you an example. So this is a particular example that written in TVM script. There are a few key things to note about this particular example. First of all, we will be able to use a Pythonic DSL to represent a tensor program that leverages hardware primitives. So in this case, this is a particular example that allows the tensor program abstraction to interact with the hardware primitive abstraction. We also have a higher level computational graph description that describes high level network. More importantly, we'll be able to directly invoke into the tensor programs from a computational graph level. And this constitutes an interaction between the computational graph layer and the tensor program layer. In addition to that, we also will be able to directly invoke external in-place update rule that's defined by TVM FFI. So this particular line is the interaction between the computational graph layer and the TVM FFI layer that represents the TVM runtime library. So if you look at this example, you can find that this is really an example that where all layers of abstractions coming together as a single program. In addition to that, each of the layer of abstraction not only tries to care about their own business, will be able to directly invoke into the tensor program from the higher level computational graph layers, as well as directly interact with the runtime libraries. So this kind of unified abstraction really enables us to allow cross layer interactions and enable incremental optimizations as much as possible because we can collectively rewrite the computational graph layer as well as the tensor program layer. In addition to that, we are also enhancing the abstraction to support a unified static dynamic shape support so that we will be able, able to leverage symbolic shape such as N and M here to really support the first class dynamic models and optimize it for training and inference. The second key perspective about TVM Unity is that we really want to enable interaction and collaborations in a virtual circle. As we mentioned, different personas and parties may like to operate on different layers of abstractions. While the previous approaches try to isolate them into individual components and build them separately, we really find a need to have a common ground across those layers so that different personas can work together through a Python-first API. So TVM provides a first-class Python API that allows you to directly interact with each of the layers through Python and TVM script. We also try to adopt an open box philosophy as opposed to closed box to allow the developers and users to poke into the com components so that you can build composable, customizable, and automatable steps for different kind of machine learning accelerations. Finally, one of the key things that we want to enable here is to enable collaborations and allow us to incrementally evolve over a common set of abstractions. For example, high-level machine learning scientists will be able to define customized operators through TensorIR which in turn get optimized by automatic scheduling sketches written by machine learning engineers that leverages the hardware primitives provided by the hardware vendor. So you can see that this interactive circle and the interaction is really something that's important to enable a collective innovation and help us to collaborate and incrementally optimize the, the, the machine learning problems for our, for our problem today as well as future problems. 
The last perspective about TVM Unity is really automation by design. Automation is really at the blood of TVM. And we want to continue to enable that through automatic search and automatic scheduling. In addition to that, we also realize that you know, pure automated solution is not necessarily the best case. We also want to be able to bring in domain knowledge as much as possible so we can combine the expertise from domain knowledge like uh, from domain scientists like machine learning scientists and combine that with learning driven performance optimization so that we can really build automated solution when it's needed and leverage domain knowledge to really get optimized programs for everybody. To recap, TVM is our unified approach that allows us to try to unify abstractions across key layers for both training and inference, enable a Python first class API that allows us to interact and collaborate via open system components, and also bring automation by design so that can gracefully leverage domain libraries when needed. This entire vision of Unity allows us to unify the solutions and really build things in a tightly coupled fashion and provide a virtual circle for everybody in the community. Of course, that does not only mean that we want to build a solution on our own. Because of a Unity, it, it enables multiple ways to interact with TVM, and it also provides a less, to, less opinionated end-to-end -end approach. So one of the key themes of Unity is for us to also embrace the broader machine learning and hardware ecosystem to allow us to enhance and embed into existing frameworks like TensorFlow and PyTorch, and existing standards like data, data array APIs and DLPACs to allow maximum reuse. By enabling the Python first class and virtual circle, and also expose cutting edge hardware to the Python ecosystem with less effort, our hope is that having TVM Unity to work together with a broader ML ecosystem and bringing better machine learning solutions and machine learning accelerations to everyone together. So now I've talked about the TVM Unity technical vision. Let's also talk about you know, what are the concrete actions we have been taking in the community today and tomorrow. With that, let me introduce back Jared back to the stage, and he will tell us a bit more about what's Unity today. Thanks, Tianchi. Now, Tianchi has spent the last chunk of the talk talking about what Unity looks like going into 2022. But we all both believe that Unity is something that we can already observe today. It began last year during TVMCon 2020, where we discussed Unified IR, our first attempt to break some of the barriers inside of TVM. Now, this in the last year, 12 months of, of 2021, we spent a lot of time taking steps towards this Unity vision. And in order to illustrate that, we're going to first look at three case studies, which look at how Unity exists today inside of TVM. First, we'll examine a use case for the ML scientist, then for the ML system engineer, and finally for the hardware vendors. We believe that all the technology we're talking about today exists on a continuum from walking to flying. The idea here is that as the technology develops, its capabilities, usability, grow, and eventually in its final production ready state, it will be flying. Today, what we'll be talking about is both in the rock walk and run part of this continuum, and we hope that the community will help us make these things fly. For the ML scientist, the big challenge is that models are constantly evolving. For example, the transformer architecture, which is now very popular in NLP, has started to become adapted for vision. As part of this, sometimes replacing key operations such as the attention is necessary to make the model fast enough to train. For example, Facebook AI researchers have trained a model called the Detection Transformer, which adapts the ideas of transformers for vision. And then they've done a follow-up work called the Deformable Detection Transformer, in which they've changed the attention operation to be a deformable attention operation. Now, what this means is it's a slightly different version of attention. Instead of doing the normal dot product, it's doing something a little bit different. It's doing sampling. But in order to implement this, they had to write their own code. Now, when they first implemented it, they realized this was too slow to train the model. And so they accelerated it using CUDA. You can see here in the comment, they say, for the bug and test only, need to use the CUDA version instead. The problem is that CUDA prevents a barrier often for ML scientists, although very, uh, very enterprising ML scientists can easily write CUDA code for themselves, or, the, or if they work at a large organization like Facebook AI Research, many ML scientists are just comfortable writing Python, and this provides a barrier for them getting the performance and thus experimenting with this model to its full conclusion. Often, if the performance isn't good enough, people will just abandon the model before they know whether it's a, a promising path to go down. 
a way to solve this problem and break down this barrier that we introduced this year is TVM script. The idea of TVM script is to expose the full power of TVM directly to end users in the programming language that they know and love, in this case, Python. So today, this allows people to write low-level kernels just like the CUDA kernel that people would have needed to write for deformable attention, but do this directly in Python. In the future, we hope to expand this to the full TVM language and continue to improve on this to make it easier to use over time and more and more high level. With that said, it's still usable today and provides quite a bit of value. In order to demonstrate this, we implemented a deformable attention kernel that we just showed a few slides before in TVM script. We were able to adapt this singular kernel, one for CPU and one for GPU, and compare against the naive PyTorch implementation and the G CUDA implementation, respectively. If you want more information on understanding how we did this and more performance data, go check out our blog for a long form version of this. If you look, what this shows is that the TVM script is actually a really powerful technique for doing this. We write a kernel in Python right next to the rest of the Python code that we, we uh, wrote. And we can see it's almost 100 times faster on CPU. Now on GPU, we're competing with handwritten CUDA, which is much faster than na naive Py Python code, but our TVM kernel is still comparable to that. The other interesting part about this comparison is that that code could also be adapted to other devices without necessitating a full rewrite, and it can benefit some, from many of the future auto-tuning features we'll talk about later in this talk. Now for the ML engineer, their challenges say, suppose they have a model like the one here. We're going to substitute concrete operations for abstract ones like A, B, C, D, E, so on and so forth. But this represents some computation graph that they want to optimize. Often the challenge that an ML engineer is asking themselves today is how do I integrate this model with all the different libraries, comp compilers, and execution strategies to maximize performance? For example, if I pick one framework to execute it under, I might not hit the performance target needed for my SLA. Imagine I'm building an, a, an autonomous vehicle application, for example, and I need to be able to get my, this network running on a Jetson platform inside the car. Now, I could pick some assignment of execution providers for each one of the operations. For example, mapping one to TensorRT, maybe some to TVM, maybe some to MKLDNN, or an ARM compute library, depending on which platform I'm deploying to. Now, the challenge is that I need to know which ones perform well in which situations. And I need to know the exact pairing of each operation and each shape and each D type in my program. In order to solve this problem, researchers have introduced Collage. Collage is a research project built on top of TVM, which uses a dynamic programming algorithm to automatically figure out which pairings maximize performance and pick the best for you. What this does is it breaks down the barriers for ML si system engineers between libraries. Before, there's sort of these opaque boxes which I need to choose between, and now I can mix and match them to, to provide the ultimate value to me as an end user. For example, in this case, collage in the turquoise color on the right outperforms all the other execution strategies for these two networks. Now, there's even more data points on, of this in the blog post that we wrote about Collage and also the research paper that blog post is based on in Collage. So if you're interested in more performance data, please check out that blog and check out the paper. Finally, for the hardware engineer, the, the biggest barrier they are encountering is the evolution of intrinsics becoming more and more complicated. For example, when there were only scalar compute units in the hardware, doing the, the mapping down from a high level program presented here on the top of the right box, the top of the left box, excuse me, was very easy. I just found a single multiply accumulate operation and I could replace it with the intrinsic directly. When the introduction of vectorized units make this a little bit more complicated because now I need to match a region of a program that is more complex, for example, a loop. And I need to detect that the loop can be successfully rewritten into that intrinsic and it gets even more complicated for a tensor intrinsic. And here we're just talking about mapping the computation, but there are often requirements on data layout, on shapes, on sizes, on memory hierarchy, and more and more that make this even more complex than it is on this slide. For example, using that last intrinsic, here is an FP16 WMMA kernel written to maximize performance on an NVIDIA GPU. 
This reaches the similar performance as cut last, which is NVIDIA's own library for generating these efficient gem kernels. And you can see it's pretty complicated. It requires a lot of understanding of the intrinsics, the, the parallelism structure, and the memory hierarchy of the underlying device. And all this is needed so that you can take advantage of those same intrinsics we were just talking about on the previous slide. Now, in order to address this and break down the barriers here, what we want to do is connect that first persona, the ML scientist, directly to the hardware without them needing to understand anything about the intrinsics. The goal of this is a high-level goal of AutoTIR, a bigger project being conducted in the TVM community. The goal of AutoTIR is to break down the barriers between existing auto-tuning frameworks and unify them into an approach that allows interpolation between manual knowledge and full automation, which can write a program for you directly. Now, AutoTR has a lot of surface area, so I'm not going to talk about the entire project today. You can find a talk from some people in the TVM community at the most recent GTC um, about AutoTIR. You can also find more information about it in the TVM community directly. But today, I'm going to zoom in on auto tensorization, one step of this process. Auto tensorization starts in a four step process. First, we describe the tensor intrinsic. So you can see here there's two fragments of code. The upper fragment of code is a description, that is a semantic description of what the intrinsic does, written in TIR, TVM's low-level IR. The bottom level is actually an implementation in TIR of the same intrinsic. In this case, it's going to map down the above computation to the actual intrinsic, which is this asynchronous MMA operation. And this will in turn be mapped down to the low-level hardware primitives, say for your CUDA G or for your NVIDIA GPU. Step two then is actually going to be rewriting this program so that we can match the actual description of it. So in this case, in the high-level program, it doesn't look like the actual intrinsic. You can see, for example, here we are doing a grid that's 16 by 128 by 128 by 128. And this is a subregion of the computation in batch matrix multiplication. In order to match the below region, we need to somehow refactor the top program automatically and rewrite it into a form that will match the bottom region. So what do we do? First, we find this candidate region. We think we can refactor it. And then what we do is we apply a transformation. So we split the two, the, that single grid of computation into two grids of computation. This outer one above that's 16 by eight by eight by eight, and the inner one, which is 16 by 16 by 16. Now you can see that the loop regions are the same. We're computing the same region in a, in a, in a tile. The challenge of the loop bodies aren't quite the same. Well, there's a little bit more machinery that can detect that these are actually, in, in fact, the same operation. And we can provide one more transformation, which then injects the underlying intrinsic implementation into the code. And you can see now we've gone from the program we saw a few slides ago for batch matrix, matrix multiplication into one that is transform the outer grid into one level of computation around a region, the inner grid into one that matches the one that we know about, and then finally an invocation of the actual intrinsic in order to compute. Now, the, the eventual goal and idea of this process is that it allows us to connect the kernels written by the end user that we saw a few slides ago, all the way down to the hardware intrinsics developed by hardware vendors without either one needing to know about each other, which is not the way the world often works today. By doing this, we've broken down the barriers and we've completed the circle. The idea here is given a high level program, you can combine new operations with existing operations, pick from the best existing operations, and then effectively map them down to the hardware to get the best out of it without needing to know anything at the high level. And it allows these personas to interoperate in really powerful ways, but we're not fully there yet. These are still in development technologies. And although we have really exciting initial results, we still need the community's help to really make these fly. In order to talk about what changes we need in the community to support this kind of evolution this year, I'd like to introduce Denise Kutnick to talk a little bit about the community roadmap. And with that, here you go, Denise. Thanks so much, Jared, for the introduction. I know I'm speaking for all of the keynote presenters when I say that the community is central to TVM Unity and I'd love to share that vision with you today. As we talk about TVM Unity and its significance within the TVM community, I'd like to start by revisiting a critical sentence within the TVM Y. 
As TVM's diverse community of hardware vendors, machine learning researchers, and compiler engineers work together to build a unified programmable software stack, they enrich the entire machine learning technology ecosystem and make it more accessible to the wider machine learning community. This virtuous cycle, shown again in this slide, is a critical aspect of the TVM Unity vision, and it is all made possible by you as the diverse members of this community. This year, you've been adding support in TVM for new hardware, frameworks, and operators. You've been making TVM quicker with new, improved, and unified optimizations, schedulers, and automation. You've been driving innovation and pushing TVM to cover new workloads that it's never seen before. But most of all, you've been building this community with your participation in the discussion forums, in the open source repo, and in this conference today. Community is the foundation of TVM Unity and the driving force for the continued evolution of TVM towards Unity. Through extensive community meetings and forum discussions, the TVM community has already initiated several new mechanisms to grow and evolve towards TVM Unity. In the next few slides, I'll highlight a few examples of the community-driven initiatives towards Unity I'll discuss their significance and show you as a TVM community member how you can get involved in this virtuous circle of TVM Unity. We've outlined a diverse set of community personas which build the foundations of TVM Unity, such as machine learning researchers, machine learning systems engineers, and hardware vendors. The ways in which people contribute to the TVM community is also very diverse. For instance, there are users sharing their experiences using TVM with the community, developers of all skill levels contributing to the code base, and managers and executives who are sharing the value of TVM with their organizations and in conferences. In order for TVM Unity to be successful, we must grow the TVM community to fit the needs of all of these community members and we've established several community-centric themes encapsulating the needs voiced by the community. One such need is community process, which ensures smooth operations of such a large community and allows us to celebrate our community's contributions of all shapes and sizes. Another such need is usability, which is especially important as TVM matures and TVM's user base grows. As the community steps closer to TVM version 1.0, having stable regular releases, easily installable packages, and interactive tutorials will help TVM stand out in the machine learning ecosystem. Lastly, for our code contributors, productivity is really crucial for folks at all skill levels. Advancing the TVM project and community in the ways outlined by these themes ensures that TVM's wide body of stakeholders are all empowered to contribute meaningfully to TVM Unity. Speaking of process, one of TVM's community-centered processes, which has received significant positive community feedback, is the recently proposed and ratified set of TVM roadmaps. In this slide, I'm using some of the existing structures of the TVM roadmaps to reflect on the community's accomplishments in the past year. I'll also share with you the reasons why the TVM roadmaps serve as a bridge between TVM Unity now and into the future. TVM's roadmaps are centered on the idea of themes, which are key areas of focus within the project. The TVM Unity mission statement outlines several themes which are listed on the left side of this slide. For now, I'll focus on showing how these themes of TVM Unity apply towards several of the roadmap items that Jared highlighted earlier in his Unity Today section. The first key project I'd like to highlight is AutoTIR, which gained significant traction this year as a way of unifying multiple generations of tuning technologies within TVM. AutoTIR is the building block for high performance with less human intervention, and furthermore, it serves as a programmable layer of the stack for anyone looking to extract even more performance out of TVM. The next project I'd like to highlight is TVM Script, which started as a Pythonic interface into TVM and is evolving into a unified and programmable way of interfacing into the full stack of TVM. Lastly, I'd like to highlight BYOC. 
For the longest time, BYOC has served as a way of unifying the interests of hardware vendors and machine learning researchers by interoperating TVM with vendor libraries in order to get the best of coverage and performance. The newest edition of Collage, mentioned earlier in this slideshow, brings intelligence and automation to BYOC to further increase performance and interoperability. There are so many examples of ways in which the TVM roadmap items showcase the themes of TVM Unity. As the vision and execution of TVM Unity evolves, the TVM roadmap serves as a community process which bridges the current activities of TVM Unity into the future. Next, we'll discuss how you can contribute to these roadmaps. As the community started learning more about the roadmap process, folks have been asking a lot of questions about creating new roadmaps, adding items to roadmaps, and potentially even changing the process as TVM evolves. For this reason, I wanted to introduce a few different processes, some of which are actively under community discussion, and others of which are well established and reused in the context of the roadmaps. Firstly, roadmaps are a perfect way to represent and get early feedback on any technical vision or project within TVM, so it's really important that all members of the community are able to easily create and update roadmaps. The roadmap RFC process was introduced for this purpose. Secondly, having many ways to add items to roadmaps really welcomes contributors, both new and seasoned, to build out the roadmaps, discover new areas of TVM to contribute to, and celebrate their contributions in a highly visible way. To add items to roadmaps, we reuse a few existing community processes, such as pre-RFCs, RFCs, and RFC tracking issues. Lastly, as the community grows, we'll inevitably learn new ways of streamlining our processes. And for this, a new process change process has been introduced. All in all, the TVM roadmap is a community-driven way of bringing TVM's technical vision to the forefront of the project, and like all aspects of TVM Unity, it is important to have strong community adoption, engagement, and feedback here. Now that you've seen a few of the ways in which TVM is encouraging the growth and evolution of the community towards Unity, you might be wondering how you can get involved in the bigger picture. There are so many ways for you to get involved in this community, but I want you to leave this keynote with a couple of items that you can tackle within the next two days as this conference goes forward. One of the first things you can do is attend the TVM Unity open Q&A session, which will be hosted by Jared in the open source lounge at 12.45 p.m. Pacific time later today, December 16th. You might also be interested in reading about TVM Unity. We've got some blog posts from various members of the community, and it's super interesting to read all of those different perspectives. Lastly, we'd like to strongly encourage you to share your feedback and suggestions on the TVM Unity vision, whether you do this in the open Q&A session mentioned earlier or in the discussion boards. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to us speak about TVM Unity today, and welcome to TVMCon. Well, thank you very much, uh, Denise and Jared and Tian Chi. Uh, my name is Matt Welsh. I'm the head of engineering at OctoML, and I want to have a few minutes here to answer some, to, to have the speakers answer some questions. Um, we have a number of questions in the Q and A tab already, and uh, you know, I'd like to start off with a question of my own. Uh, which is uh, just so happens to be the top voted question. So this is a great question, uh, <laughs> which is uh, to, to better understand, you know, I'd like to know from uh, Chan Chi, you know, how, how does the TVM vision uh, relate to some other projects like MLIR where there's a, a similar vision or goals? Thank you, Matt, for the question. I think this is a great question. So I think all the project ecosystem kind of share similar high level goals in particular, MLIR is also this ecosystem of different abstractions. Like what we mentioned in terms of, you know, abstractions in those four tech categories we mentioned at the beginning of our talk. In terms of TVM, we are highly focused on machine learning accelerations and also learning from ecosystem MLR. 
And uh, and also, you know, over the past few years, we have summarized the pain points on building things end to end. So the problem right now is not necessarily about abstractions, but how do we put things together? And I'm sure our colleagues in working on MR based compiler and ecosystem also feel the same pain point or will feel the same pain point that we started a few, a few years ago. Right now, the state of ecosystem in PyTorch, TensorFlow, or TVM or other MR-based solutions are still based on a multi-stage learning approach. And we believe as a community together, uh, regardless of you know, solutions, we want to move the, move the state towards a more unified vision that, that allows us to you know, break the boundaries that we mentioned and allows us to do more coll interactive collaboration. So in a particular case of TVM, we would like to enable TVM's best advantages through this unified interact automation However, we also realize that you know, because we are really focused on machine learning accelerations, we also want to leverage the broader ecosystem. And in that regard, we want to integrate with uh, effective MR-based solutions like, um, like you know, the front-end latent dialects as well as some LVM-based uh, hardware specification accelerations. And together, as the entire ecosystem, we believe that we can build better solutions for both machine learning hardware and, uh, and the machine learning scientists ecosystem for the future of machine learning acceleration. Thank you. Yeah, I also think to jump on that, one other simple way to maybe spin it is MIR is a framework for building many dialects where we effectively want to build two or one dialect, depending on how you count it, and that we want to mostly provide an ABI for linking everything together instead of providing an API for, for building compilers. So I think that's a little bit of a different thing where we don't want to necessarily provide a family of APIs for comp compilation, but a single one and then an ABI so that things can, can interact. Yeah, thanks, Chan Chi and Jared. That's really helpful. Um, great. Well, it looks like uh, there's a question here from Michael Kleber. Uh, can you elaborate on the link between TensorIR and TVM script? Which developer roles should code TVM script and which one's TensorIR? Uh, Jared. Yeah, so me and Chan Chi can answer this one together. Um, so I, I think the idea is that TVM script is just another way to present TensorIR to the end user. So in the past, we sort of all the code was written in this embedded DSL, which has various limitations. Uh, the ability for compactic sugar is limited. Uh, users often have to understand the well formedness constraints of the AST. The idea with TVM script is to provide a Python syntax that is introspectable, debuggable, reprintable, so that you can interact and, and, and write both TVM script and eventually relay programs at the high level without having to drop into another text editor or another tool chain. So really it's just another way to make it easier to write tensor IR is the way that I would think about it. Um, and then as we continue to work on meta scheduling, the idea will be that those programs are directly schedulable. So you could write a kernel in there and then invoke the meta scheduler on it. Yeah, I can also add a bit more. So one of the things we learned from a machine learning ecosystem is that you know, while building machine learning accelerations, not only want to build the solutions for compiler engineers, but also other solutions around it, including things like, you know, uh, for, for machine learning scientists, then Python is still the most important part of the game. And we really want to be able to enable our developers to have that Python first experience. As a result, you know, TVM script is one mechanism that allows us to, in the future, any of the TVM program at any stage, you will be able to directly use, print it out as TVM script, directly script up and interact with that in an interactive fashion and allows you know different persona to interact as a common ground in that sense. Great, thank you very much. Uh, uh, Insop uh, Song asked a question that I also had, which is, uh, you know, uh, uh, Chan Chi, it looks like you may have mentioned training uh, in your uh, presentation. Does TVM support training, uh, model training, I'm assuming is the uh, assumption here, as of today or in the near future? Yeah, so I'll speak to that question. Thanks so much, Matt, for asking. So in terms of training support, TVM currently supports a limited but very interesting set of use cases of training, particularly on edge devices, with on-device fine-tuning being one such example. In order for TVM to support training more broadly, we need to support several technical features, such as first-class dynamic and symbolic shapes and control flow. We believe that the TVM Unity vision is the first big step that TVM is taking to broadly support training, and we all at OctoML care a lot about training as well. Great, thanks very much. Yeah, I think this is very exciting to see TVM potentially being used for these workloads in the future. Yeah, uh, I also think there's a talk from Alton 
today or tomorrow. I, I have to double check the schedule on train on some of the initial work on training we did. It's motivating some of the work that we want to do in 2022. So if you're interested in hearing more, that's a great place to go find out about it and ask some more questions. Yeah, great. Uh, I had an, I had another follow up for you, Denise, just around, uh, you, you know, what are some of the ways in which we can think about expanding the TVM ecosystem to make it easier for new users to get up to speed on the platform? Yeah, absolutely. There's so many ways of expanding this ecosystem in order to make it more usable. I did discuss some of that in my talk, but I'll just reiterate a few key points. One of the key points here is that we can definitely have cleaner entry points and APIs within the compiler to make it more usable for developers. We can have better documentation and tutorials to make it easier to onboard users. And most importantly of all, I think, is improving the discoverability of our roadmaps so that new users can quickly sign up for tasks in TVM as well as learn quickly about TVM's vision and the associated features that people are implementing within TBM. Awesome. Uh, looks like we got time for maybe one more question here. So it's a question, another question from Michael. Uh, uh, so we've shown a lot of TVM script functionality that isn't yet uh, in the TVM main branch or in the documentation. Uh, tell us a little bit more about the state of that and, and where we can find more information. Chanchi, um, do you want to check that or Jared? Yeah, either one of us can do it. I mean, my, my answer is, I think it's something that's kind of being, it's part, it's sort of been part of the Tensor IRF for the initial version of it. And we're still in the upstream process of the final bits of the Tensor IR, Auto TIR, Meta Scheduling. All of them are referring to kind of the same efforts going on at Octomel uh, and other places, including Amazon and Alibaba and a few others. And so I think as those efforts kind of converge, we're gonna bring documentation and push this as more of a supported feature Right now, it's sort of still in this, let's say, preview mode. Uh, some of the stuff that we showed today is totally actually in mainline already. It's just not the, the final sort of polish and documentation is not there yet. Um, there's a blog that is coming out later today that gives a little bit more explanation of it. Um, and I don't know if TNC has some, some more follow up. Yeah, so the tension uh, component of it actually, you know, check out Shi Yuan's tutorial yesterday. Uh, oh, that, that will be recordings, I believe. So, so there's also a tutorial about uh, tensile scheduling already in the TVM mainline documentation that you can go and check out. Uh, in the meantime, you know, we, we definitely want to expand TVM script to go beyond TensorIR. So, so in the future, you know, there's an evolution called Relay Next that aims to build a first class dynamic ship support and training as well. And uh, you know, in, the, we, in the future, we want to be able to enable TVM script that, that's able to represent any programs that you will be able to use in TVM. So, so, so that was a kind of a future thing that's still working progress. If you have more questions, we're having a Q&A session later today at 1245 Pacific. Yeah. So if you want to come, come grab us and we're happy to chat for much longer. Well, thank you very much, uh, Denise, Tianchi, and Jared. Really uh, appreciate the talk and um, uh, look forward to learning more about all these things as the conference goes on.